so I put on some of these uh, little strips of claw plate, firing sheets on it. It's already glued on. I'm going to sand them down to even it out. But I wanted to do something a little, a little, you know, fixture, keep it even. But before we do any sanding, let's paint. And then we're going to begin using the sea blue. Now, by the way, I have not mentioned this in the video because I always kept on forgetting to getting the name and I finally got it. The person that I've been watching that was doing all this diorama stuff was a guy, uh, his channel is called Scalaton. And he was the one that did a video on the 1350 scale U-boat doing this technique. So, he did it on, it's a bigger ship, of course, but I'm going to try this one on. I'm going to use the sea blue paint as the point of him doing this. This is acrylic. I haven't used Tamiya in a long time. So let's hope this comes out right. I'm uh, painting this on 15 PSI's. Paint the inside where the ship goes on as well. Let's go around. And I did a 50 uh, a 50, 50 mixture. I'm going to let this dry before we move on to the next part, okay? Okay, so now it's nice and dry. And I'm going to give it the second highlight color. Now, in the video that I mentioned, the first thing it says was to paint sea blue, which I have. But the next thing it asked me to do is paint clear, um, uh, gloss clear which I have, but I only have it as lacquer. And I don't know if I could do this on top of this. And then the next thing after this is to use clear blue, which I thought I had an abundance of during the time when I was making, you know, using uh, Tamiya paints for painting Gundam. Clear, uh, clearly, I didn't have it. So I was wondering what could I use to give it another highlight of blue to give it that extra tone of layer color. And fortunately, I'm going to be using this one, Hot Metal Blue by, by uh, Eloquine. I don't know if this thing will burn through the paint, but we're going to try this. And we're going to try it in small areas. In areas that I think, like I'm going to concentrate on areas that Shows the lines.
you guys can see this. But yeah, it is actually giving the effect that I was hoping for. Alright, here is how my little diorama of the sea has come up, came out, you could say. Now I did multiple layers of colors that you see here, and the first thing I showed was doing the, the sea blue. And the next thing I was supposed to do was gloss it, but I didn't, I didn't want to do that. I said, I, I thought maybe I had clear blue, but I didn't. Instead I've used hot metal which came out good then this little highlights of white that you see in here what I did was I was trying to use a little bit of the cold gray acrylic to give it a more detailed look to it to bring out some some lightness in the water and then I resprayed it with the clear again um, don't know if it came out right but it's not 100% done yet because we now need to put in another layer of pro a product that I showed before. But let me just show what this kit looks like with... I'm sorry, this diorama looks like with the ship. So, if I put it here. And then put this on this. There you go. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. It's not glued on yet, I'm going to do that right now, and especially since I just finished painting uh, this one uh, using gray, um, a darker gray tone, and now it looks good. So now I'm ready to actually glue this ship here, and I'm going to use um, white glue. And then I'm also going to be doing the wave effects using a, a combination of two products. So I'm going to probably end up using this, but I'm also going to use cotton balls to make some wavy lines here going through here and back here and a little bit here. But also, I'm going to use this solution that I have here. This is um, Heavy Gel Medium by a company known as, well, it says Amsterdam on it, but when I ordered it, it was from a company called Talon. Now, here it is, Royal uh, Talon. Talons or Talon, I think it is. And uh, as you can see, this thing is partially broken because when I ordered it, it was broken. And but let me see, it should be still sealed up. A lot of it is lost, but it still can be used. It is a gel medium type setup. And uh, when it dries, it has this. As a matter of fact, it's actually here on this. You see the uh, gelatin. Um, feel of it of you know the waves so I'm gonna be applying it all over the place we're gonna do this in that in a few moments let me just put a, something on the table so we can work on it all right I already put uh, Elmer's glue on it so it's held into place and it's in an angle as you can see there and that's actually really good because you know in, a, in an ocean environment the ships are usually swaying back and forth now, I'm doing this for the first time, and I'm using this wide brush here that I remember seeing uh, the guy who uh, did this in his channel. I'm going to wet it a bit, and I start filling in the areas here, just to give it some... Now this gel medium goes on like this, but it, when it dries, I think after 12 hours or so, I'm, 
actually I forgot what it was, I don't know if it's 6 or 12, it goes down clear. I'm going to be very generous on this because I'm going to see how well you do this. In case anybody's interested in getting this, um, this cost me around, I think, $13 with free shipping. You just got to have to go online, uh, go on eBay. That's where I picked it up and uh, search for, um, search for, um, ooh, again, Heavy Gel Media. And the brand Talon. It says Amsterdam on it, but do Talon. It should be a lot easier. Now, while this is doing, while I'm doing this to get the effect of the water on the side, and I'm going to fill in the gaps. It's not going to fill in completely because um, it may need a little bit more detail, but we'll cover that in a minute. I'm also going to put stuff here to simulate the the the, um, the wash of the uh, engines. I'm also going to do a little bit on the areas of the, of, the, of the ocean as where the water breaks. Now it doesn't actually turn white, unfortunately. So if you want to do white, um, which I was trying to do with the airbrushing, which it didn't come out the way I wanted, I didn't want to mess it up, you can try to like take um, a lacquer-based paint no, sorry, uh, acrylic base white paint and just put a smithering on it which I'm about to do, see if I can try to do that later on now I am going to do something else I'm going to take a cotton ball Bit. I'm going to put it in here, wedge it, wedge it in with the, the medium, and then put a little bit more on it to simulate the, the, um, the break in the water. It sticks on pretty well. Gives it where the water splatters up in the, in the air a bit. This also gives you a little bit more detail and uh, whatnot. should cover it up a bit. The guy who did the video of the submarine um, did a lot more uh, more with this using like a scene where like the water is is going over the side or hitting something and it's splashing or it's um, coming down um, off the side of the ship I've seen that technique before on on a Gundam kit as well where somebody took this wetted it down and made it as the water as the um, as this was like coming down like the water is um, spilling out or off the off the item off the Gundam's leg 
dripping off to the side. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to cut it off later on. Or I can probably collect it. Yeah, just bring it around like that. This is coming out better than I expected. For a first timer. <laughs> I'm probably going to get used to this. And hopefully maybe one day apply this to a Gundam. I don't know how, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Alright, so that's one side. Let me continue on, and then we'll do a final review of it. Okay, and here it is. The USS Sullivan 1700 scale by Trumpeter is now complete. And now, on its permanent base, my very own ocean scene diorama. What do you think of that? Yeah, this came out far better than I realized. Doing something like this technically is not a complete, exact, or perfect science because when you do, I guess, uh, no. Hold on, I'm, I'm probably reiterating someone else's comment or just talking out of my ass. But when you do like a ground scene, it's um, there is some things that you can do and get away with. But with an ocean, the ocean is always unpredictable and moves in different types, in different areas. Um, so doing this came out far better than I expected. I don't know if I did it right or did it wrong. But regardless of the case, for being for doing this for the first time, I have to uh, I have to be proud of myself to be able to achieve something like this. I'm gonna paint the borders, uh, you know, hand paint them later on. But right now, I just want to show off this how well it came out. The use of the cotton ball and the mixture of the heavy gel medium gloss gives it that nice little effect where the water is breaking and and whatnot. And of course, covering up some holes and gaps that you see there. Um, I've also used a little bit of paint uh, in areas like I use this one, cold gray, which is almost like an off-white, in areas to cover up and highlight and give it a more detailed look to it, as you can see here. But you know, I, I never imagined me to doing something like this. I've always, I always wanted to do a diorama build. Um, I just didn't know, know where to go with it because you know my first diorama build was not the best. Of course, it was it was a it was a it was an ambitious idea doing something so huge with the Gundams. But with this, it seemed simple, yet not out of the realm of possibility. And I hope to do this again, not only with maybe another ship build, maybe with a Gundam. I don't know yet so far. Um, but yeah, this one came out amazing. Absolutely amazing. And who would have thought that all you need is, of course, a foam. Cut it up to the, you know, the where the ship is going to be. Um, using tinfoil. Nothing but tinfoil. To make this, um, you know, the shape of the ocean and how you want to do it. Um, just regular acrylic paint, you know. Some gloss here and there. And then, oh, you know, the only thing I had to spend was this one, which cost me 12 bucks. So if you guys see something like this, don't hesitate to get it to do something like this. And I'm hoping to use this product um, because it does great, create great ocean scenes and gloss uh, once it dries. You know, after I, after I um, did all the, uh, the scenes here, I, I actually wet it up a bit to give it a more glossy look to it. So that came out really nice. Yeah, yeah, this came out really cool. I like this. I really do. So, for first time building of a ship um, on my channel ever, I am um, I am proud of what I just did right now, and I hope to continue on in future builds. I have a ship on the uh, on the side that I want to try out again, but I won't do this now. I'll do this later on down the road. So. 
you know, be, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy this. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little segment as well. Uh, me just building something different. With that being said, I'd like to thank you guys all for watching. And stay tuned for more build time with Strider Prime coming soon. You guys all have a great day.